What's up, everybody? It's your girl Erica from the Classy Climb blog. We got a heater this Sunday. It's already hot in Austin. You already know how it do. Come in, drop your city and state. It helps us plan events for the year. It helps us connect with you guys. Um, we've got some great events coming up. They'll be in Phoenix, Houston, Atlanta, and Florida, but I can't remember where in Florida. So drop drop a comment drop a like come through the door if you guys tell me where your cities and states are we can plan better events right so we have a ton of sales in california and new york so new york i haven't forgot about you i'll be up there for matt uh matt the mortgage guys event this weekend it's a workshop on june 1st uh depending on how we make things work i may do something in new york that week we'll figure it out uh right now california you guys have a ton of sales near oakland uh sunnyvale mountain view so all those areas are pretty close so we'll do something in that area uh charles ogilvy is putting together i think we already picked the place i think it's shacks or shaquille's uh in los los angeles when i get down there we'll have the flyers and information what else just a lot of good stuff going on so you guys saw i did the mastermind event you saw a couple of different things the funding course is available and also create your own investment group is available we've had so many emails and just been responding to emails of people on investing in the trucks and real estate with us man right now we got a property in detroit we're getting ready to work on and a property in florida and a property in another state city we'll get those information out soon but at the end of the day you guys owner be owned drop the like there's 50 of y'all here and eight likes help a girl out hit the like button uh, drop your city and state so to kick this off with listen I know everybody wants me to uh, be nice about California but you know California get on my nerves <laughs> California has a story right now making a lot of news about a woman who's 102 she's being she got a notice to vacate now many people say oh how horrible of the landlord to vacate this 102 year old woman well first of all let's back that up he's letting his daughter live there it's california california is expensive second let's keep that a buck second the woman's 102 many people are like why can't he just wait till she dies y'all that's horrible that's horrible the fact that you would even say why don't he wait till she dies she's been there 30 years y'all 30 years her family should have been had their stuff get like let's be honest this landlord probably thought 10 years ago hey this woman's 92 years old her her daughters or sons or whoever's going to take care of her is probably going to move her in or take her to a home and he been sitting there like she's 102 now y'all know like i know he been waiting he been waiting like who like if i was him i'd already be taking the equity out of the house because that house if she's been there since the 70s or actually the 80s 30 years at least since 89 she'd had to be there or 90 1990 so she's been yeah since 89 so she's been there 30 years that house been paid over three times y'all especially in california you know that house probably was like three hundred thousand, and, and now it's worth a mil i mean that man if i was him i'd have been taking the equity out and bought like 20 other properties i've been going on with my life but the fact remains that people are booing this man and his daughter now imagine if this landlord lost everything and all he had left was this house from her and one his house and he want his daughter to have somewhere to live how dare people think this landlord doesn't have the right to give his daughter a house to live in that's crazy y'all that's crazy people think this man should be shamed for giving his daughter a place to live isn't it his house it's his damn house this is the stuff that's crazy and you know a couple people dm me and said shame on her damn kids and grandkids and nieces i said yeah this woman's 102. Now, you know she don't live there alone. This landlord probably been seeing three or four or five cars in the yard. People coming in and out of that big old house because it's not one of those small houses in California. It's a pretty big house in California. They got all people in every room of that house. And he been thinking, well, y'all got enough money to have four or five people up in this house with this 102-year-old woman and it's full of stuff. There should be enough of y'all in that house to move on to the next location. Now, Arnold Schwarzenegger done came in and did his PR stunt where he's, you know, he's going to give her that family, keyword family, some money so she can relocate. Now, let's keep it a buck. 
All them people in the house with her, at least four or five. They don't got enough money to move after getting a nose vacant after 30 years. This is the stuff that, that I feel, I, I, I try to feel sympathy for, but I already seen the pictures. The house is full of clothes and full of stuff in every single room. This woman is not living there alone. So it'd be one thing if it was a sad, small, one bedroom, 102 year old woman with some cats in there. I'd be like, oh man, that's sad. But still, she's 102, where her family at? To realize it's a big old house full of people in all over the house living. Y'all, I cannot. I cannot. Like, if you want to have house, house kind of living in California, y'all should have did that 20 years ago. 20 years ago, they should have bought a house. And then they all could live in it however they want and take the equity out of it as much as they want. California was expensive 20 years ago. California was expensive 30 years ago when this woman ran. And it's almost like we're saying, shame on you for doing what doing what you would do anyway uh there's a lot of people saying well there's no point in all these black people owning houses if all they're gonna do is check charges the same rent as white people that's crazy y'all that's crazy that's like saying you should buy these broken up houses in the hood put 20 30 40 50 60 thousand dollars into them and still rent them out for 500 dollars like they were before nah that doesn't happen now can you have some sympathy and have a few uh low-income housing or section eight mixed in with the new development for sure but you can't the neighborhood it was going to change anyway and it, it's like saying hey me and you are both brown so won't you give me cheap rent so i can have four or five people laid up in this house anyway that's crazy y'all you know that's crazy and i don't have no sympathy for it i really don't and the sad part is this could be a learning lesson, but it's not. It, it's really not. On one hand, you got, oh my God, this poor 100-year-old, two old ladies kicked out. Shame on her family. Shame on them for not having her. And the way she looks, she looks very frail. She may be walking every day. I don't know. But she looked very frail from the pictures. That's ridiculous. She should have been somewhere where they could have cared for her properly. It, it, it's, it's ridiculous to me. So then on top of that, on the flip side, New York Times opinion piece they put out today. This is all marketing. This is why I'm like, I'm out here fighting the BS marketing because you have to fight the BS marketing and train your mind and your children's mind to what's real. Okay. So New York, New York Times has a woman write an article saying, oh, the American dream is not for black millennials. So first I said, well, let me look at what she says before I judge her harshly because I think she's full of it. She talked to 75 of her friends in their 30s. They live in Rayford, North Carolina. They live in Jackson, Mississippi, New Orleans, New York, all over the place. And they can't afford homes. Now, first of all, I said, Erica, step back. Step back. When she said Rayford, North Carolina, she messed up. Because I'm from Fayetteville, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And Rayford's down the street. Rayford is where people go to live when they want to live real cheap. So you're telling me people done left New York, came down to North Carolina, where New Yorkers come every day of the week and buy a whole house. And your friend, because whatever their problem is, they can't afford a house in Rayford, North Carolina, a $80,000 house, a $125,000 house, that's three bedroom, two bath, or four bedroom, two, uh, three bath, they can't afford. And then I've even talked to people from New York and Conne Hartford, Connecticut, when I was in Fayetteville, oh, I moved way out here to the, you know, middle of nowhere. And I go, well, that's good. Good you moved that far out. You know, she's like, yeah, you get more house for your money. Well, first of all, you came from Hartford, Connecticut. Second of all, you came from New York. You were living in very small quarters. You've come down to North Carolina to a house that's almost 4,000 plus square feet, got an acre of land, and you're like, I need more for my money. More how? More how? Where? More how? You, you've got the biggest amount of land you will ever get in your life. You coming from Hartford, Connecticut, or New York. You have a backyard. You got grass. You got acreage. You got space. And so these people are trying to play you for dum-dums. Oh, my friends can't afford it. So I go through the article and I scan some more. Because you know, if you got to read, you got to get some time down to the bottom. This girl makes $28,000 a year and qualify for a $250,000 loan. She said it was a no money down loan. So first of all. Let's, let's attack that. You make 28000 a year? You're in poverty. You're in poverty. You don't even make fifty k a year? Like, you can't even be talking in this conversation. This conversation ain't even for you. Now, people say, well, Erica, what about if somebody make forty? You know, they, they have no... twenty eight k a year is somebody making $10 an hour or maybe $11 an hour. Somebody break the math out that for me. 
28,000 a year divided by 12 months. Somebody in the comments, do your girl a favor, do me a solid, divide it up. I'm, I'm just gonna let y'all, I know it's a 30 second delay, y'all just do that for me. 28,000 a year divided by 12 months. Now, first of all, in the article, I wanted to personally write this woman an email and say, if you don't get this crap off New York Times making 28,000 a year, if you are making 28,000 a year, what you need to do is go make more money. Thank you, Tim A, 2,333. So $2,300 a month. And now you talk about taxes. She's probably closer to 1,800 a month. $14 an hour roughly before taxes. Okay, so this is my problem. This woman is talking about something that don't even include her. This conversation ain't for you. Now, people say, well, Erica, you know, $14 an hour, she could be an EMT, she could be all this other stuff. This is true. But the part that New York Times article is missing is, what do most people do? Like, when she says millennials, millennials are age 24 to 38. If you're a 38-year-old millennial and you can't afford a house, why? That's a choice. You put other debt in your place. You've got cars. You've got kids. You've done something else. You can't blame this on, oh, New Orleans is expensive. New Orleans is getting expensive. That's true. Jackson, Mississippi? She named Jackson, Mississippi in the article. If anybody in here knows Jackson, Mississippi, or can look up realtor.com in Jackson, Mississippi, I can't because of my phone right here. But literally, I bet you money there's houses for 150 k If that. If that. So this woman with 28000 a year was offered a $250,000 home on a special program. And she's saying she can't afford like this is what this is where it's, this this is where it's crazy somebody said i know jackson lowered there you go when i was in hoover alabama there were a whole brand new houses for one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. um pat not vestavia hills but way lower and you sitting there you're like people were making 60k a year at the factory people were like yeah he makes good money good he can afford a whole new house in alabama so what they're telling you really is is the american dream they want is the brand new house on the brand new side of town in the super nice community i mean that's what they're saying you have to really sit back and listen to what these people are saying in these articles and dissect it because that's bunk what she's saying is bullcrap what she's saying is not legitimate now i really i was really upset i'm not even, and it's a no doc loan at that so extra sketchy okay you can make an additional thousand dollars a month to two thousand dollars a month working a part-time job this woman could be at 40, 40K plus a year, but she's at 28K. Exactly. She should get an apartment until she does better. Now, people are going to say, Erica, what about student loans? If you got student loans and you only make $2,300 uh, $2, a month, you still need a part-time job. Y'all keep acting like, nah, I got a degree. I don't care if you have a degree. The degree doesn't make you middle class. The income does period the income does now you're gonna say what well, erica what about the guy who's a truck driver yeah that makes you a truck driver's wife but that still makes you blue collar middle class blue collar middle class if your husband makes 100k it makes 100k it just makes you blue collar middle class everybody's trying to be white collar middle class and that world doesn't exist for everybody it just doesn't now what this article missed is income this woman does not make enough income to be talking about this facts one two marriage Three, investments. If you know you're only going to be making $28,000 a year, stay in, stay in the cheapest apartment you can, put your money to the side, and chill for 10 years. Now, on the flip side of that, what happens if you don't make more money and get an investment in a home? You become the 102-year-old woman who's getting evicted. And, and here's the flip side. If that 102-year-old woman had a house in California, by now her children would have got the equity out of it or would have sold grandma's house do you know what i'm saying like that like let's really take an example of what would have really happened to this woman if it was her own house her kids would have sold it for california that story i hear that every day of the week and twice on sunday that oh our mother had a house it was worth a million dollars now in california and they sold it it happens all the time Somebody says, I know a CNA in Jacksonville with four rentals. Jackson's has some houses for $7,000. You just got to get it in a better neighborhood and clean it up. Oh, yeah. Same thing, Jacksonville, Florida. We're buying a cheap property around $13,000, $15,000. Pink Lady Barbara got my book. Thank you so much. And there's going to be a volume two of that book where it's edited and cleaned up. So please, in the comments, like, someone's like, oh, it's got errors. Oh, it's got this. Like, I don't care. 
I don't, not that I'm not, but I'm like, it's 80 pages of pure content of where you can go invest your money, put your money in places, start getting assets for five to ten, twenty five dollars, and people are complaining a little too much, a little too much. What the hell can you put aside with 28k a year, please? I'm trying. To, I'm serious. No, no, I'm serious. Like if she rents a really cheap apartment and puts five to twenty dollars away a week, she still can do it. But that's my whole point. She's talking about buying a home and she only makes 28k a year. Her whole focus should be going to get a part-time job or a better job. Now, somebody going to say, what if she works in social work? What if she's a teacher? What if she's a this? It's like, yo, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's not my problem. It's not my problem. So, again, your circle matters. If she calls 75 of her friends all over the whole United States, in Jackson, Mississippi, New Orleans, New York City, Rayford, North Carolina, and they all can't buy a home. What does that say about her circle, y'all? What does that say about her circle? Do you know what I mean? Like, there's something to be said about who she's choosing for friends. If she called 75 people around the whole United States and all of her millennial friends have no money, they can't afford homes. And I bet you one thing, they've all went on vacation. They went on a cruise. They done got a nice car. Like, I'm in Austin, right? Yeah, her circle sucks. I'm in Austin right now, and I'm seeing people with brand new cars complaining about apartment rent. I'm like, y yo, like, there's your there's your money right there. Like, and I get it. People say, well, Erica, should people drive raggedy cars just to satisfy what I'm saying? No, I'm not saying drive a car that's falling apart every two days. But a brand new car? You can't afford the payments or the insurance gentrification gonna fry listen here's the thing gentrification just means someone acquired the house and cleaned it up that's it doesn't matter if they're black or white <laughs> tim a a bmw a 96 month payment fan yeah people want people want the status and listen this girl was like i remember somebody back from my hometown and this guy he graduated high he graduated college he was 23 his grandpa died he took over the funeral home now literally he didn't really take over the funeral home it was in his name, kind of, right? Well, everybody on staff did everything they were supposed to do regularly when, like, the grandpa was there. But he was now the grandson leading this funeral home. Now, this is why I say your team and who you have around you is important. Because if Ben, I'm not trying to say his name too much, y'all figure out which funeral home I'm talking about in North Carolina. If Ben would have came home and all the team would have been like, peace out, the funeral home would have went to shit. And he would have had to close and sell. But because the team wanted their jobs and loved their jobs at this funeral home for all these years, they were, as soon as the grandpa died, everybody just showed back up to work, did the same routines, making phone calls, you know, making sure caskets were there, making sure sales were done. And when the grandson took over, basically in name, they told him what his job was. Now, that is the power of owning a business. That is the power of owning a full business full business where you have a team that if something happens to you, your wife your children your grandchild could come in there tomorrow and all the staff is like well i'm not losing my job i'm gonna just come to work and do what we supposed to do i'm gonna come to work and handle sales and i literally saw that and was talking with my mom about it we were just so shocked that he just stepped into the role because everybody on staff just did their job they just went about the day like oh, okay well you know ben's here now but whatever ben didn't even know what to do now, he's seen his grandpa's business here and there, but overall, he did not know what to do. Showed up, and everybody else told him how to do it, okay? Now, this is the problem we have in our community. If you don't have a, a company you can pass on to your child, you know what I mean? Like, this is what happens. When you don't have something to pass on to your children, you don't have a house, you, are, you pretty much are guaranteeing them to start all over when it comes to getting out. Like, again, when I left college, a lot of the people moved into a townhouse that was like uh, 55000 to $60,000. These brand new townhouses in Raleigh. All their parents needed was $3,000 for the down payment on the FHA loans, a lot of them. And they were straight. Now, people say, well, oh, Erica, my parents ain't got three grand. If your parents are in their 50s, 60s and ain't got three grand, whoo, that's rough. That's rough. That's bad business. I know two girls who used their tax student loan refund. They used their student money. They held it all semester. They worked a job. And then got got that uh, got those townhouses in Raleigh. 
right as they graduated like everybody else and they were waitresses at logan steakhouse in greenville north carolina and one girl just had a promise of uh employment like an offer job an offer letter you can get an actual house with a job offer letter yes you can so the problem here is this is lack of creativity lack of money lack of parents planning appropriately and lack of business structure Right now, I went to go look at an office. Uh, well, I did it yesterday. I looked at an office at four. It had three. It had four offices in total inside, and it was dirt cheap. And I was like, "What's the catch?" I was like, "Is there a dead body in here? What's wrong with this place? Something must be wrong." She just was saying the price that they they built so many offices in Tex Austin, Texas, that they had to they had to rent it out super cheap. So I was like, "Okay, this makes sense." But again, in order to have that space, even though it's super cheap, it's like a thousand five hundred bucks a month. I would need staff in there. All the staff in there would have to have a job that creates income. And that's what people don't understand. Like when you want to move to bigger locations, everybody needs to be on team. They need to have a particular job. They do. Um, I think the Budgetista has 18 people on staff. Maybe 23 by now, but 18 people on staff. So when you see these YouTube pages, these Facebook groups, they don't run by themselves. <laughs> you know what I mean? It takes people to run them. It takes people to make them go. Um, and honestly, that's that's the best. That's the best. So, let me see what you guys are saying here. There's 152 of y'all in here. 55 likes. Make sure you hit that like button. And make sure you drop your cities and states so I kind of have an idea where we're planning our next events. Change your circle of friends and better yourself. Yeah, I mean, listen. If this woman called 75 people across the whole United States and all of them were saying they couldn't afford to buy a house, my question is, what type of house were they trying to buy? They literally said, New York City... Rayford, North Carolina, Jackson, Mississippi, New Orleans. These are the main ones I read off the article. And I was like, I'm from a city not that far from Rayford, North Carolina. Those homes are dirt cheap. They're pennies on the dollar. And the same people from Hartford, Connecticut, and New York come down there and buy them and be like so grateful. They be out in the middle of the country. We're like, why are you so far out there? They be like, oh, that's far? I get more bang for my buck. I'm like, get out of here. People refinancing cell phones, which I would. Man, listen. This woman told me, like, <laughs> I went to go check on my phone. I was like, I want a Google Pixel. They're like, it's, it's like $600 or something. And they're like, oh, you oh um, you want a payment plan? You want to wrap it up in your plan? And I was like, what? She was trying to explain to me. I was like, oh, a loan? No, girl, I'll pay for the phone. Is it time for my upgrade? If not, pay for the phone. If not, I'll hold this phone till it's time to pay for the upgrade. And I never sell them back my phone. Like, when I'm done with it, I keep it. Because every two minutes, I see some celebrity with a naked body from their phone where they claim the phone is wiped clean, and yet they found some stuff. So I'm always like, keep your phones. <laughs> the average car payment is $500 a month. Mines will be paid off in July, but that's absurd. Yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, when I'm... This, I'm always in a couple different Facebook groups where people are saying, oh, I got a bad car loan from Santana. I got a bad car loan from Credit Santana. No, you didn't. You didn't get a bad car loan. What you did is you already wanted that car. You read that it was 15, 17% interest. You did not care. And you decided to buy it anyway. Now you're three months, four months, in, you know, three years in sometimes. And you realize, oh, my car is losing value. Because you're trying to find assets from the wrong thing your car is not an asset you know a lot of people what happens is they get a little ten thousand dollar car and three years is only worth five grand they're like i need a new car no you don't you need to take your money and buy other assets and when i was on instagram somebody said other than the stock market girl there's a million things other than the stock market you could buy land trees timber lending notes everything like this is how far behind a lot of people are they don't even understand the fact that on paper a car is really not an asset it's really a liability when you try to go get a mortgage for your home the first thing they go a lot of the mortgage lenders look at is when you buy the car how expensive is the car because they know uh from the last recession people will leave a house before they will leave an expensive car and some of the reasoning behind that i think is also it's so hard to get car loans once you get a repossession that people will hold on to the car at all costs so Tim A, I buy cars. I can fix myself. Be good. It's good t skill to learn. Just call Ghostbusters at the price right. It takes a team. Orlando, check it in. Phoenix, Arizona. Plano, Texas. Charlotte. Brooklyn. Houston. Detroit. 
Yeah, I think we're going to do an event, Dallas, an event, Houston. Because I want to do Austin, but it doesn't always work for everybody to come to Austin, even though I think it's easiest. But uh, a lot of people are complaining, so I'll try to do a bit. Dallas, Houston, Phoenix, L.A. meetup, just a meetup with um, uh, Charles Ogilvy, and then something up north, the north part of California. And yeah, they showed me on the map, it takes five hours to get to where I'm trying to go, Oakland. I'm like, ooh, oh my goodness. My sister purchased a cheap home in St. Louis. Had a coworker from another company, previous trade, redo her home. It's beautiful. Congratulations, balloons. More. Santana is for bad credit folks. <laughs> Yo, this is my thing. Atlanta Angel. Every time I'm in that Facebook group, that's all people say. Santana's doing me wrong. Credit acceptance is doing me. I'm like, listen, no, they're not. Nobody else would give you a loan. Or you weren't smart enough to go by your credit union and get a loan first. And here's the problem. When I talked to this one guy, he went by his credit union. His credit union only approved him for 11000 but the car he wanted was 16000 So he went with the car dealership. And so that's how people get in these bad loans. Yeah, it's more than just my tooth, David Murray. It's the jawbone right here. They put bone back here. Um, so they took a tooth. They put bone in. They did all kind of stuff. It still has stitches and a liquid stitch on it. So my face isn't as puffy. But trust me, there is a liquid stitch thing right here that they're going to cut out on Monday. Well, Tuesday after the holiday. So mouth is doing a lot better. Uh, I tore up some chicken today. Probably shouldn't have. Probably all kind of sore. But I take pain medication in the daytime. So can't really tell. You know, I'll know later if it was hurting. I'm from New Orleans and you can get a decent house for 100000 Yeah. San Diego, Ramsey's best advice, start with the car for 2000 See, here's the thing, Curtis. People, by the time people save $2,000, it's burning a hole in their pocket and they want to use it so bad. Like, that's why when people say, you know, Grant Cardone says money doesn't get tired, doesn't sleep, but it does get bored. And that's what ends up happening. People have a little bit of money and they go crazy. Alabama, yeah, you can get a good car, 2 three k. Raleigh, I've been my, on my day, Ramsey. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm telling you, I literally remember when there were parts of Raleigh you can get near Cary, where the townhomes, two of the friends still live. For 55K, them townhomes over there now are like 150, 300,000. Like, you know, take advantage while times are good. Don't sit here and wait till it's so expensive. And the see, nobody wants to start with a starter home anymore. A starter home is where you start. And then two to five years, you either sell the starter home and go to a bigger home. Or if you, and here's, this is honest, but you're going to hurt your feelings. If you have to sell your starter home to get your next home, you don't make enough money. You just don't make enough money. This is because most people, the way it used to be is if you bought your starter home at the right price point, you should be able to take 20% and go to your next home. Down payment. Or you should be able to get another FHA because you're moving so far away or within a, ra a radius that makes sense that you should be able to still get FHA again. Now, if you tell me, Erica, I couldn't qualify for that and I don't have 20% for my next home, then you really probably can't afford the next home. If you have to sell the starter home to get the next home, like your equations are bad. You should be having a rental out of your first home and the rental income, the bank will count on the mortgage for the next home. They'll count 70%. So if you can rent your old house out for a thousand, they'll count $700 additional income a month to your income. And if you still can't afford the next house with that, that means the equation's off. Your math is bad. Your income's bad. Somewhere in this equation is not good. Get rid of something. Tampa, Fort Lauderdale. They say the NFL draft may be coming back to Nashville. Nashville is booming. It's been booming. D. Anderson, I'm 45, no kids. In 2015, I had a separation slash divorce. My parents passed away. I rebuilt my credit from 465 to 748. Since being on my own credit, career, and financial well-being is truly a best. Well, congratulations, D. Anderson. VA Beach. At least he got approved for a loan. Eh, that's one way to look at it. From L.A. to Oakland is a fast five-hour drive. Uh, Alicia, I think I'm going to be in some kind of bus. We talked about it. It's like some kind of bus for, like, commuters or like like you know people ride it it's not like a it's not like greyhound it's like a really luxurious bus with like a really relaxed seats um i forgot what it's called but it's something we're supposed to be riding in to go up there to do the event i really don't want to drive on california roads i ain't even gonna lie not even feeling that at all love that hat carolina panthers yeah i couldn't find it for a couple days and i found it chicken is good y'all 
What do you think about mobile homes? I mean, I am... Here's the thing. The whole craze about mobile homes right now is just because there's been some people marking it very well. Just like trucking. It's like, ooh, mobile homes, mobile homes, mobile homes. There's nothing fancy about mobile homes. There's nothing. It's just another investment. It's just cheaper to get in sometimes. But at the end of the day, it's just another investment. It's just like buying real estate. It's the same. Now, the thing about mobile homes people are getting so uh, crazy about is many cities are not permitting new mobile home parks. So in order to get your mobile home park or get multiple mobile homes in an area, you'd have to be in the county or you'd have to be in the county outside the city you're living in. So that's been a big issue right now. Come to Tampa, please. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple people in Tampa I, I want to hang out with anyway. So we'll see if we can make something in Tampa work. Santana is a subprime limer. They'll approve almost anybody. <laughs> you know, there was a company, I don't know if it was credit acceptance or who, but they used to call it if you're breathing loan. Like, they used to call, call no-doc loans if you're breathing loans. And that's sad. You know, to me, that's sad to me, at least. Okay, when I saw this story, I was like, I wonder what Erica would say. Yeah, the 102-year-old, that means shame on her family. People think I'm being harsh, but shame on her family. Shame on them uh, five times till Sunday. Because they should have been had a 92-year-old woman oh. living somewhere else. So... I think my phone's getting too hot from this angle. Hold on, y'all. See, this is the Texas sun problems that we're about to have on every show. Hold on. Dang, it's in there. Okay. Yeah, the sun's baking the phone. It's like temperature too hot. It might stop. That's crazy. All right. So it says, let's see. Let's see. Here in Texas, rates are skyrocketing. This is true. This is true. Let me see. Sorry the phone shaking, you guys. I literally am trying to keep it from cutting off, which it probably will. Oh, my first car was 200. I invested a thousand last six years. I'm telling you. Everyone wants their dream home from the jump. Exactly. Like, there's no patience. There's no waiting. There's no uh, starter home. There's no fixer upper kind of, you know, it's ridiculous. Hey, thank you. Someone said they started watching my videos two weeks ago. Atlanta. Hey, Erica, can you tell us more about this trucking company? Why you decided there and curious as hell? Go look at some of my older videos. I don't want to like bore everybody to death every video we're talking about trucking. It's it, Go check out the Hood Estates course. They have an intro video for $27. Uh, long story short, go check out the video where I talk about 30,000 Sikh Indians joining the trucking industry. And every time I look up, we have no dominance in any industry. Why? We're not owning things. We're not buying things. <laughs> so I, what really t uh, turned my head was when I saw that article and I realized in a few years, a lot of black guys and a lot of Hispanic guys are not even going to be able to drive. <laughs> okay. Let's see. I must have been led to your live video. I currently have a repo coming up with Santana and medical bills of 70K due to a stroke. This is my wake up call because I was feeling depressed and hopeless. So first of all, um, let me see what your name is here. Lavas Rebus, you need to immediately see. Here's the problem when we go to the hospital and we have a medical situation, every single hospital in every single part of America has a um, income what do you call it? Income. Oh my god, I forgot the name just that fast. It's a it's basically saying hardship, it's a hardship letter. So before you leave the hospital, I know you had a stroke and I apologize for that, but someone in your family could have went down to the billing area and asked for this letter, med uh, med like income hardship. Now you can also still do that. You can still go to that hospital and that hospital where you got charged and say you have a hardship. Now, a lot of people say I got medical bills. If you got medical bills, that means you ignored them for a while. Now they're in collection. Never ignore them. I tell that. I try to tell that. Is, this is part of why I stopped doing so many credit videos because a lot of it was just people ignoring it till it was like a problem. And now all you're really stuck with is trying to get things off and making payment plans with people. And payment plans aren't these quick things sometimes. So what you want to do <clears throat> is. I would fight the repo with Santana. Now, how do you fight repos? If you send a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars a month, and I would not even you can use the online payment portal, or you could literally you send a cashier's check with a letter every time saying, I just suffered a stroke, I have a medical hardship, and every time send that letter, I'm sending you what I can so the car will not be repoed. And make a copy of that. 
trust me, this is <laughs> this is why Kevin Trudeau got in trouble. It was called in his um, debt cures book or whatever. But a lot of times what happens is you're showing that you are making effort to make payments on the vehicle and you uh, will uh, let them be aware that this is what's happening to you. And if I were you, I'd just hide the car. I've had people I know hide cars for six months to a year. Okay? <laughs> My friend was overseas and put it in a storage unit. It was very hilarious. Um, he was working in Afghanistan or whatever. He was doing the mail for the uh, military people. Um, and honestly, with every medical bill, literally HIPAA letter at all. And you literally can write a letter to each one saying medical hardship and also go back to the hospital and, and uh, find out their billings. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's a restart. But again, like, again, this is all an income issue, not a, you could probably settle all that for 35000 You can get a nice home here in Southwest GA for fifty k. You sure can. People are worried about status signals. Were you affected by the flooding in Texas? No, that's always in. If you look at Texas and you look at Oklahoma, there are certain parts that flood all the time anyway. And this is why Native Americans didn't live there. This is why certain groups of people didn't live there. Skynet just sent me a recommendation for this live. I thought I was subscribed already. See, Eric and Nicole, Skynet be playing games. I've been on for 36 minutes. It's, it'd be playing games. Um, I have tried to have a tenant in my house to offset the mortgage and the neighbor snitch got fined by the city. How did the neighbor snitch? Did you have, did you have like short-term tenants? Is this an apartment star? I'm confused on that. Um, you know, I think people, do I think people should pay off their mortgage as soon as possible? I'm not the biggest fan. For, I think if you could do 15 years, do 15 years, right? Because a lot of people have these $80,000, $100,000 houses that if you really think about it, if you divide a $100,000 house over 10 years, you could knock that thing out. You really could. If you just use your tax returns, you could knock it out. Two, I think your main focus, honestly, as I see the economy turn, is having rentals. Having rentals, having different income streams, um, because really you're buying income streams. You're not creating them. You're not creating a bunch of companies. A lot of times you just need to work on your job, making the most at your job, taking that money, putting that money into different income streams. And if I'm telling some good word, throw me a dollar super chat. Some y'all are very quiet this week. Uh, let's see. I live in Texas and only make 25000 gross and just started putting aside savings. I have to watch your videos. I have 2000 saved up so far. Got to start somewhere. Congratulations. That's a good amount. Do you realize that 70% of Americans don't even have, can't grab $1,000 in case of emergency this week? So 2700 is great stuff. My phone's overheating, I think, y'all. New builds on the outskirts of DFW. Less than 750 to begin build. USDA, no money down. Builders are giving away 5K at closing. They are giving these properties away. Yes! I tell people all the time, in Plano, a $150,000 house, three bedroom, two bath. They're giving away um, $30,000 incentives for pools because, you know, people love pools in Texas. When are you coming to Huntsville? I'm not coming to Huntsville. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I'll go to Birmingham. I'll go to Hoover. Um, Huntsville, I've seen a lot on the news, but, like, when my mom drove from Birmingham to Huntsville and there was a problem with her car and the, the tow truck guy said, do not stop here, I don't have no, like, I had a cousin stay in Huntsville for a GS10 job or something like that, a government job for a while, but, yeah, I'm not coming to Huntsville. You can check me out in Birmingham, though. Be careful in Texas. We aren't safe. Oh, honey, I'm always safe. See, the what you guys are, what you guys are seeing on the news, unfortunately, is propaganda because if you see the thing about northern people i'm gonna be careful northern people think that you live up north that it's safe for you it's not safe the north is very segregated and it shows like where y'all live compared to where white people live up north is not the same now y'all may work in the same places but y'all don't live in the same places in the south we live side by side these white people know they're not upper class or lower than us they know we're making the same income we live almost the same now also in the south is big second amendment in texas alabama south carolina north carolina black people if you look back historically have not had we don't have no problems because they knew we had guns it's this new generation of black people that they're like oh what's going on no no, no. in the south you can google article after article of pastors preachers deacons not playing that so i'm always safe in texas i don't play that oh you gotta be careful because they're gonna get you in texas that's slave talk yo that's slave talk i'm sorry it is do you go to Dallas Fort Worth? I do. I do all the time. I actually have some land to the left of Dallas that I am trying to figure out what to do. 
my dad was a truck driver yeah see there's a whole different see like there's a difference between being a truck driver and owning trucks and i'm saying this in like total respect of everybody but like like right now i have two african drivers the company that put them in the truck they got them from overseas like and I had to ask them, listen, I want to make sure y'all are paying these people fairly. I don't want people coming from another country not being paid fair. Um, I had to really talk with the trucking company twice about this. Like, like I want them driving my trucks, but I want them paid right. It's a whole different stratosphere. You know what I'm saying? When you're talking about a truck, a truck can technically make anywhere from 10K to 20K. And this is gross of the truck. Now, you got all kind of fees. You got all kind of stuff. Now, this is if two drivers are driving the truck. Now, you're not going to get a whole 20K out of that truck. But that's what it made in loads and dropping stuff off. Now, you got to take about gas. You got to talk about paying the driver. Now, that's if you had a team of two guys in it. And that's what these these Ukrainian, these Middle Eastern guys, these Russian guys, that's why they own all these just these lo uh, logistics companies. So every time these guys are making routes, 3K, 2K, that's why you see hot trucking starting to be so popular because people who were gatekeepers in the trucking industry aren't as much anymore. So again, I don't want to keep talking about trucking every video. It just ruins every video. Like I'm trying to keep this real estate based as possible. So charity care. Yep, that's true. What are some places to buy cheap property? Uh, places to buy cheap property are everywhere. Literally go on realtor.com and go out, go 20 miles to an hour outside your city. Now I'm going to say this and I don't mean to be offensive. The average person doesn't drive more than 20 miles in a day. Wherever they live, they kind of go in an eight mile radius. They've been doing study after study, especially with those little things you put in your car to test your driving. Insurance companies realize you only go about eight miles from your house. You really don't drive around past your house. For whatever reason, that's just how people are. They're very routine. They don't go far. And if you actually take the time to go 20 to 40 minutes outside your house, you'll find cheap property. You can even go on Zillow. The, the Timothy, the T Tommy Holt video, Junior, if you guys go back to that video and watch him talk about the Zillow trick, it's amazing. So. There you go. I'm a certified billing coding coordinator for military hospital in VA 10 years. 23 years experience. There you go. I just paid off my car note early. It's wonderful. Yep. Right? Make a copy of everyone and date it. They should work and give you a situation. Exactly. See, if you're sending $100 to $200, it is showing that you made an effort. So. Yeah, you can do it. Thank you, Terry. Yes, when are you coming to do in Dallas, Bikini Plano? I'll be in Dallas. Um, I've drove to Plano and I've drove to McKinney before. Beham is worse. Man, Beham ain't worse. I go, I, I stayed in Hoover and Vestavia Hills, which I know people are like, that's not Beham. Um, but that's where I would go again. No worries. Oh, thank you for the $4.99 super chat. Leisha, this phone is really overheating. Leisha W. That's exactly what I'm doing, using my job and spending my extra money on income streams. There you go. Erica, keep that legal strap. Oh, I don't play that. I'm from a cop family. We just don't play that at all. Been looking for investment property in Houston. It seems like inventory is low. Is there? It's been hard to find deals. Um, our group is working with some wholesalers right now. There's people always finding deals. You got to be talking to some of these wholesalers. You got to be like on the phone chatting some of these dudes up. Hold on. Let me see if I can plug this thing in. Keep this phone from burning up. I don't know if it'll work, but we'll see. Okay. No, I don't know. It might not work. Let me see. Alright, let's see what else we got here. CJ, I agree. But before anything, study currents. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know so many Africans coming to Texas. Oh, every day of the week. Trying to move from Michigan to Dallas this summer. Congratulations. Come here with skills. Should you pay off your land early? Only if you want to. I can't find the trucking video. I'm new to your channel. You have so many videos. You guys have to learn how to use the search bar. If you type in the search bar, search bar on YouTube. Just type Erica Williams Trucking. It'll pull up a couple different trucking videos. Nope, I'm not talking about Peter Bell. I only buy um, Freightliners. Orlando's moving in shape. Erica stay here dropping Sims. Um, 34. Should I take 30K for my 401k and buy a rental? That's a personal decision. That's absolutely a personal decision to take money from your 401k because you're going to get taxed, you know? So, again, CYA, consult your attorney, consult your accountant. I'm from Dallas. 
and it's better than Tampa, in my opinion. African American people in Texas stand up better than they do here. Yeah, we don't play that. No, it doesn't. People are interested in other things besides real estate. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? Super chat. I like. Let, I'm not trying to be smart ass, but like a lot of people, they won't even answer questions on their channel unless you super chat. And so I've been nothing but a beacon of free information on this channel, and I try to be patient with people, but don't don't come on here angry because I won't answer your particular question when there's a search bar in 1,700 videos. It's a search bar, literally. There's a search bar. I've done like 10 videos on trucks now. Uh, I pulled, pulled the trigger on bidding on a property to flip. Going to Mastermind with you, Kinder Barnes, has me super motivated. Oh, what's up, Malik? Um, motivated. Encourage everybody to go to one. Malik, we had a good time. You're going to be in that video, we see. To book a consultation. Thank you so much. I think for sharing that. I know. I put it over the vent, but it's like, it is really overheating, y'all. I don't know. It's just like, bump me right now. It's like, it's pissed with me. Let's see if it'll work. The phone is putting out more radiation in your turn it off. Get offline. Let it cool down. CJ, you already bought whatever. Okay, got you. So anyway, I've tried to give y'all all the good information, but the phone is literally like crying. You guys, I gotta like put it down. Greensboro, North Carolina, been great. Been been great. These places, all these cities y'all are naming. If you can go on realtor.com and find something that's appropriate for your budget, it's fine. Like, don't overthink it. I promise you. So anyway, all right, you guys, listen. This phone is overheating. It's hot up my hand. It's a, thank you for the 100 likes. Thank you for the 200 uh, to 200 and 400 people that's been coming in and out of the thing. Thank you very much for watching the channel. Definitely, you guys, just go in the search bar. Any video you want to talk about credit, uh, trucking, tax liens, it's in the search bar.